Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another review. The time of the Mezco 112 Wonder Woman from Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Well, this figure has been delayed for quite some time and it's finally released. Is it worth the hype? I would have to say both yes and no. But we'll get into that right now. Um, I won't keep you waiting. Basically, because the figure is so late, this is my explanation, at least in my opinion, because the figure is so late and we expected so much, especially from previous Mezco stuff, we're a little let down by how many steps we're taking back from Wonder Woman. Things like no waist swivel. It doesn't look exactly like her. No double jointed arms. I feel like all these things kind of set them back. If this had actually released when it was supposed to release, but you know, you can't worry about release dates and things like that. It would have been something that would have disappointed him, but not as much as so much of a disappointment, strictly because we've gotten so far with the Mezco stuff. So it's kind of like a tiny setback. But anyway, we'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly on this figure right now. She poses is actually really good, though. Static. So let's point that out. Magic. So real quick, I want to point out that uh, I know some people complain about the head sculpt. But uh, it does look like her. It just looks like her face is a bit more wider. The cheekbones are there. The, uh, the look is there. It's not one of those things where it's a bad sculpt. Because as you can see right here, to me, at least in my opinion... It looks like her. I know under certain lighting it may not look that way, but it's definitely there. Maybe just too wide of a face. I could be wrong, you know? So let's get into articulation. Head, you can move up, you can move down, you can even tilt it side to side. The issue though that stands is the simple fact that the hair is kind of, even though it's a soft plastic, it's a semi-difficult uh, hair to pose in the back. So what's gonna happen is obviously gonna hinder her articulation in certain aspects. So when you want to pose it a certain way or do a certain thing, you may be in a tad bit of trouble. Now, the arms can rotate up and down. They're hindered, obviously, by the head joint, as you see. So you have to be careful with that. They do spread out. And they do have a forearm swivel. But no uh, bicep swivel. So that's fine. One of the things on female characters, I know people care for double jointed arms. The reason why I care for double jointed arms on Wonder Woman is because she does a lot of fighting. She's a master of martial arts, and not being able to cross her arms here is kind of a big deal considering her signature move kind of amount when she clanks her gauntlets together. It's a, it's a thing. So you can't do that with this one. A little bit of a disappointment, but again, we live and we learn, right? But I think probably the biggest disappointment next to not being able to cross her arms is the simple fact that Wonder Woman has zero waist swivel. Like, none. It's one of those things I'm truly disappointed by. It's, it's non-existent. She doesn't, not able to move it at all. And it's one of those things where, again, I think Wonder Woman is one of those creative, talented, and gifted fighters. She's an Amazonian princess. She should be able to do all her strategic fighting moves or whatever it is she is going to do. So I'm a bit disappointed by that. Overall, as an action figure that you pay your money for, you still technically get your money's worth here. <laughs> it's just I'm disappointed by the fact that Wonder Woman should be able to do more. Her legs can lift all the way up. They can actually spread outward. There is a thigh swivel up top. And the knees have a nice articulation joint. Mine has a bit of a paint issue, but that's nothing I can't fix. There is ankle pivot, which I thought was a great idea, especially on Wonder Woman. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, we look forward to it. And there's no toe pivot, but all in all, you do get a figure. The next joint might be a tad bit too long as well. Nope, just me. I didn't put it all the way down. That one's yeah, my fault. My bad, y'all. But as you can see here, the figure does look good. It does. But I don't want it to just look good. I want it to be an action figure. It's like uh, Mezco's policy is pose, play, and display. I can do most of those things. But um, again, I take the good with the bad. I can make it work. But that's not to say the same for everyone who is going to spend $80 on this and be a little disappointed. So... Real quick, we're going to talk about accessories and all the things that she comes with. And, uh, oh, one thing I want to talk about is her skirt. There's, this is the cloth that's on it for the Mezco figure. It's not bad. It's actually pretty well done. It's just a tad bit short for me, but for those of you who uh, like it short, this is for you. Real quick, we're going to just pose her up. Then we're going to talk about the accessories and things that she comes with. So she does have an alternative head. This one, the hair is more to the side and the mouth is a bit open. I think this one looks exactly like her. Um, this one is definitely the one that goes, okay, this looks exactly like 
Diana Prince, Gal Gadot. It is a, uh, it is pretty much nailed. And this one actually gives you the better articulation because the hair is flowing to the back. So actually, let me leave that on for a bit, so you guys can enjoy that head sculpt. Let's fix this. Ooh, voila. Next up for her lasso, they actually give you real string and it's wired. So you can actually do a quite a bit of posing with this, and I and I like this. Although it's very thin, I do like the ability that you can actually fold it out and do something cool with it. You can hold it within her hands. Um, I just think it's a little too thin, but I think this was a cool concept for her golden lasso of truth. I think it was cool to try to do something like this. I just think that, like I said, tad bit too thin, but you can definitely make this work in some photos. Next up, when in, when in a relaxed position, I'm not doing anything. The lasso can actually sit right here because there's a folded up version. Sits there really well. And then she has her sword. I forgot the name of this sword. I believe it's called the, the God Killer. So this is the God Killer blade. It actually has the inscriptions on it. I don't know if we can actually get that on camera. So it's actually pretty cool. You're supposed to be able to leave that right here. So honestly, I think she looks really good. Doesn't function as well, but does look really, really good. And then she also has a shield. So pretty much everything you see her in in Batman v Superman, you do get here. You do get two open palms, relaxed hands. These are actually pretty soft too, so you don't have to worry about breaking them or losing parts. These are actually very soft. And then you have soft hands too as well for holding the blade, holding the shield, holding the lasso. It is all here and it can hold them all actually pretty well. So all in all, I think the Wonder Woman is good for me. I like it. Personally, I, I very much like it. I do think, however, for other people, this may be one of those things they may want to pass on. But uh, hopefully I can show you some photos and see. Maybe you may still want it or if not, but it's fine. If you want to pass on this one, you want to go with the Mayfex or if you like the, the, the Bandai Justice League one, I think those are all good alternatives if you don't want to get them. But if you want to stick with the Mexico stuff, you'll be fine with this one as well. But there are drawbacks, just saying. <laughs> In that case, let's get to the part where we talk about size comparisons. This is going to make or break it literally for a lot of people. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Batman and see how she looks with the Batman for you guys because I honestly can't find my Superman. So uh, bear with me as I use Batman as the example. And because she's supposed to be smaller, I think this actually works really well. She's not crazy smaller, but smaller. And just in case you want to get her or you want to mix and match it with the Mafex one, we're going to do a quick size comparison with the Mafex Superman. And I think, honestly, she fits well with either one. Superman is obviously a bit smaller, but it shows you that she can fit in with any of them. So let's keep that in mind. Now we're going to compare her to her other counterparts from both Mafex and Bandai. This is her Bandai counterpart, which is a tad bit smaller than her. This is her Mafex counterpart. Ooh, still had some plastic on there. This one is the Mafex uh, Justice League, not Justice League. This is the Mafex Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. So as you can see, size comparison wise, you can kind of pick and choose the one you want. I think the one that kind of looks the most like her right now is still the Mesco one. So, yeah. You guys can pick and choose. I like the sculpting on the plate too as well. So now we're going to compare to some other lines. Let me lift you up. Whoop. This is her next to a Storm Collectible Scorpion. Her next to a Marvel Legends Killmonger. So she still scales pretty well with Legends and scales pretty okay with Storm Collectible stuff. Here she is next to a 1000 Toys Carb. Here she is next to a Mezco Punisher, just to show you what she's like next to other Mezcos. Here she is next to SHF Captain America from Infinity War. And then here she is next to Kamen Rider Cross Z Charge. Oop, I dropped his weapon. So he's a tad bit tinier than her. Last but not least, an articulated icon ninja. They actually scale pretty well with her. All in all, she scales well. She may function well. I'll figure out how she looks in photos, and hopefully you guys will like. 
In the meantime, guys, hope you found this informative. Hope you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope you do good. Please be good. Drink your water. Later.